Here in New York, protesters are continuing to camp out in a park in the financial district as part of an action called Occupy Wall Street. Democracy Now!'s Mike Burke was at the protest encampment last night and filed this report. We're just blocks from Wall Street and the former World Trade Center. We're in a park called Liberty Plaza, where for the past 13 days, thousands of protesters have gathered. Hundreds have slept here overnight in an unprecedented protest for an action called Occupy Wall Street. Behind us now is the General Assembly, a nightly meeting where the protesters gather to decide what actions should come next. Moments ago, we spoke to some of the organizers behind Occupy Wall Street. My name is Patrick Bruner. Um, I'm 23 years old. I'm from Tucson, Arizona, although I live in Bed-Stuy until, well, until, you know, I can't pay for it anymore, which is going to be next month, and then I'm officially moved in here. Um, and I'm on the uh, press relations working group uh, here at Occupy Wall Street. I think that there's a very real sense in this, in this country, and there has been for a long time, that things are not working. You know, we, we have right now an 80 percent of the country thinks that we're on the wrong track. We have only a 15 percent approval rating of Congress. You know, those numbers are unacceptable. And people are coming out here to, devo to voice, you know, their disapproval with the system and to voice their themselves in a direct democratic fashion. And that's, it's, it's really refreshing for, for people to have a voice. It's really refreshing for people to, to think that they can affect change in this system that has essentially essentially made it so that only 1% of the population are citizens. Marissa Holmes, and I've uh, been with the New York General Assembly from the beginning, and basically every night we had an occupation here of 200 to 300 people a night um, sleeping and uh, organizing themselves. We have a food committee, a uh, medic team, a legal team, a couple of different media teams working, um, and really it's about self-organization, participation, and democratic process. And what keeps you coming back? every single night here. Um, just the incredible momentum and support that I've, I've been getting from around the world. I mean, I just, we have an Occupy Chicago, an Occupy LA, an Occupy Milwaukee, an Occupy Atlanta, an Occupy Tampa. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Um, we have international support from Spain, Greece, Egypt, Tunisia. And so hearing all of their stories and their actions, realizing this is a global movement, um, keeps me coming back. The protest movement at Occupy Wall Street received a significant boost this week when one of the city's major unions voted to endorse the occupation. My name is Jackie DeSalvo. I am a English professor at the City University of New York uh, at Baruch College and the Graduate Center. The Transit Workers Union, which is the most militant public sector union in this city, which is the one union that has had the guts to break the Taylor Law, which is an anti-strike law and strike, and suffered great penalties for it. They endorsed Occupy Wall Street today. On uh, tomorrow at 5.30, there is a rally at One Police Plaza organized by many rank-and-file trade unionists from my union, the Professional Staff Congress, to condemn the police brutality and harassment. And at the end of that rally, they are going to march to Occupy uh, Wall Street. I have to say that this is a working class group, by and large. They're described as middle class in the bourgeois press. But a lot of these young people are unemployed, are underemployed, underpaid, working a couple of part-time jobs. So they identify very easily with the labor movement. Many of them wish they had a union. Let's take a quick tour of Liberty Plaza, the home of the Occupy Wall Street movement. For the past two weeks, the media center here at Occupy Wall Street has been the way the protesters have gotten the word out to the rest of the country and the world. Over here is the food area where hundreds of people have been eating every single day. Donated food, muffins, apples, power bars. They've been serving three meals a day for the hundreds of protesters who have been camping out here. Tents are spread throughout this part of Liberty Plaza. Protesters are preparing to spend another night 
the 13th night in a row inside this park as part of Occupy Wall Street. The police have barred the use of tents, but that hasn't stopped protesters from staying here, even in the rain and the cold. On the northern end of Liberty Plaza, space has been set aside for protesters to make homemade posters. Some of them read, you are the 99%. System change, not climate change. Wall Street bonuses equals money from crime. My name is Hero Vincent. Um, I'm an artist, dancer, actor, model, songwriter, singer. You name it, I do it. Um, basically, I'm here because I'm fighting. I'm fighting for my family. I'm fighting for my friends. I'm fighting for everybody who's going through the same thing we have gone through over the last couple years. There's a certain 1% that is taking everything from us, you know, that's not even looking out from, for us. They're supporting our politicians. The politicians to support them and it has to be an end. There has to be some restrictions on these, these lobbyists that buy out campaigns and stuff that, you know, is causing us to go to war, still be in war that we shouldn't be fighting. It's causing us to lose our homes and mortgages to go up. So that's what our message is. We want to change. Here in the western part of Liberty Plaza, the space has largely been used for small gatherings, for classes, for teach-ins. On Wednesday, we observed one class on direct democracy, another one on how to facilitate a meeting. Just hours ago, we caught up with one local professor who had just returned from Spain. He was talking about how the Occupy Wall Street fits into the global protest movement. Uh, my name is uh, Gerardo Renique. I'm a professor of history, Latin American history, uh, at the City University of New York. As a historian, I see the, 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 this, this current crisis and the events of the last two decades in the long-term perspective. It's what we're going through, I think, is the consolidation of, of a particular economic model that it's grounded in financial cap, uh, in the financial sector, in a, in a sort of casino capitalism. And I don't see in the near future, you know, uh, an economic structure that is going to be creating enough jobs, you know, uh, um, to um, to absorb, you know, the number of young people that comes out of high schools, you know, universities. So it's a, well, I think well, one of the, the, the questions that uh, this type of demonstration raises is the fact that we need to see, start thinking, you know, of a new alternative, you know, to want to come out of the crisis, and I would say, you know, an alternative model of civilization. <laughs> While the Occupy Wall Street protest has been festive and peaceful, the New York police have arrested dozens of protesters over the past week. In at least two instances, a senior police official pepper sprayed peaceful protesters. The official, Deputy Inspector Anthony Bologna, is now under investigation. Uh, my name is Michael Tracy. I'm a journalist. The flyer that I created uh, depicts Deputy Inspector Anthony Bologna on Saturday in a video that surfaced, I think, two days ago. It's pepper spraying protesters unprovoked after they had actually uh, been given an order by him and were complying with it. So he's standing on the sidewalk near Union Square and the, author, uh, the protesters that he had instructed to vacate were doing so. And he, even then, as they were walking away, he indiscriminately started spraying them with pepper spray. And this was caught on video. After uh, the first video, which had surfaced a few days earlier, depicted him just spraying women in the face with the pepper spray. Um, and when I looked at this image and I just saw like the look of rage on his face, what really came to my mind was that we can do better than this uh, collectively. Protesters deserve respect from officers, and officers deserve respect from protesters. And this image belies that mutual respect that should be afforded. I caught up with one of the protesters who was pepper sprayed by Deputy Inspector Anthony Bologna last Saturday. I asked her to describe what happened. My name is Yell. I was standing on the sidewalk watching someone get thrown into the street and brutally attacked and arrested as I was waving a peace sign saying, what are you doing? We're remaining peaceful. That's what I was doing. I was not being aggressive. I was not being violent with any in any way. I was not given a warning that I was about to be pepper sprayed. Didn't even wasn't I didn't even get to see him come at me. It, I turned my head and it happened. After, it took four to five seconds for me to realize that I had been pepper sprayed. And that was it was very scary. It was very scary. Now, are you afraid to keep coming to the protest after that? 
a lot more to scare me. <laughs> Definitely not scared. Um, it gives me more of a reason to want to be out there now, to participate in every march, in every general assembly. I want to be more active. I want to be more part of it because people out there have seen what happened and they want us to keep going and I'm going to keep going. I, I see no ending for me in the future. I'm going to keep fighting. This Saturday will mark the beginning of the third week of the Occupy Wall Street protests. A major demonstration is scheduled here in the Financial District in Lower Manhattan. Protesters say they're planning to stay here indefinitely and hope that Occupy Wall Street inspires similar protests across the country. Francis Fox Piven. I teach at the Graduate School of the City University of New York, and I'm here because I'm so enthusiastic about the possibility of this sit-in, of uh, the marches that are occurring over postal worker issues, of uh, the sort of sister demonstrations that are starting in Chicago and Los Angeles and maybe in Boston. I think we desperately need a popular uprising in the United States. None of us know. I study movements. We don't know the exact formula when those movements erupt, but it could be. And if that's true, then these people who are here are really wonderful, and I would do anything to help them. For Democracy Now!, this is Mike Burke with Hani Masood and Ryan Devereux.